uh, I would like to have a show of hands for those who have ever heard of Geoparks. <laughs> ever in their lives. Okay, who of you have uh, actually used Geoparks ever? Who used regularly? Is there anyone here who thinks it's a good thing? Is there anyone here who thinks it's a slow, bloated, and crappily written? <laughs> okay, good. Then we are sort of in agreement. Uh, few parts is a name originally suggested by uh, Tolef von Hen. Uh, in 2005, which I wrote because I noticed that many packages uh, have difficulty uh, uninstalling because the maintainer does the installation of a package because they, the maintainer uses the package themselves. But because they use it themselves, they never uninstall it. So there's an entire code path, a, a post RM script that never gets called until someone files a release critical bug. So I figured it would be nice to have a tool for testing that. <laughs> so I wrote few parts, which is package installation, uh, upgrading, and removal testing suite. And uh, the name was chosen because it had zero hits on, on Google. <laughs> and this is what it does. That's not actual code. It sort of looks like Python, but it's pseudocode. Uh, it first creates a CS root, a virtual environment in which it pretends to install Debian. Then it installs the package into the, uh, this CS root, removes it, and verifies that everything went okay. And if there's a problem, it reports a failure, and if there's no problem, it reports a success. And getting all the details working required a... hates IA32 libs. Not me. That's not me. Uh, that was I. Yeah. So getting all the details worked out was was a bit of uh, iteration, but that's basically what it does. There's a lot of uh, tests that the parse does that don't show up in this pseudo code. Some of which were uh, it turns out a bad idea, but we'll get to that. The short version of how to use PU parts is this command. You have to run it as root because it creates a CH root and uh, this requires, requires root privileges. Someday when I have a lot of extra time, I will add support for KVM so that you don't need to run it as root, but that's somewhere far in the future. The output is long, typically at least several tens of kilobytes. Sometimes several hundreds of kilobytes. I don't think I've ever gone over one megabyte, but we'll see. The uh, output is in the form of a log file. You don't need to read all the text there. It's in a small font, I know. Um, there are specific parts of the log file that you need to look for. And that's the good part. If you see that, then everything went okay and you can upload. The intention is that you use PU parts like you use Lintian before you uh, do an upload. And if there's any problems you want to fix, then you fix them. Se essentially, you just scroll to the end of the log file. That's yes. the important part. The this last is not, lines. Yeah, this is not necessarily the last line. They might, might be a dozen or two dozen lines after that, but grepping through the log file is, is easy enough. Sometimes you get an error. And depending on the state of the package archive, you get this error very rarely or every time. This is one, one of the uh, <laughs> things that hurts my ears. <laughs> uh, this uh, broken symlink test is one of the things that turns out to be a bad idea because it gets triggered uh, occasionally by uh, some of the core packages in the archive, which result in every package that you test, failing tests. Right, so uh, 
it's almost visible that what the timing at the beginning of, of the line is an offset from where uh, the beginning of the run of the PO parts. Uh, on the machine at home, on which I uh, tested this, it took one minute, seven seconds to run, which is not too bad. But then again, I have a local mirror and uh, a red zero and so on. So in real life, it might take a bit uh, slower with the default options. Therefore, since you're all building your packages with uh, pBuilder anyway, and pBuilder has a tarball, and the creation of the tarball is what takes most of the time in, in uh, a pubart run, you can use that option, dash p. And then pubart will use the pBuilder uh, tarball and everything goes slightly faster, 12.12 12 seconds if you're lucky. Sometimes it takes, still takes a long time. Uh, there's a couple of other options I, may rec uh, I would like to recommend. One is to skip the so-called minimizing phase, which is a useful thing to do, but it rarely catches uh, problems. Uh, what it does is uh, when when PewPart has installed Debian into a CH root, it then throws away, mo throw, throws away most of it because I wanted to have only the essential packages, basically. And that is uh, basically no one runs a system like that. So this doesn't really find any uh, problems that occur in real life. The other option is uh, no symlinks because that always finds problems that you don't want <coughs> to be bothered about. Holger, tell us about the website. Uh, Wait. Uh, several, several. several. Yes, as many as you want. As many as the kernel will let you. Yeah. Um, can I start it? Yeah. <coughs> PU parts Debian org also uses minus minus no symlinks because it's useless. <laughs> um, there's a web page at PU parts Debian org um, displaying the results and having the manual and the FAQ and other stuff. And it's a dedicated machine um, do donated by HP some years ago and hosted in the University of Oslo. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, it's running this setup now since spring. I started sometime in March and since May it's basically, I've not done much on it. It's a master slave setup. So it's not the normal setup last just described, but there's a master scheduling the pa packages to be tested and a slave um, testing them, which can be extended to have several slaves. And the machine access is also restricted. At the moment, only Luke and me have access to it. Um, but I would like other people to uh, have get access at least as master um, to be able to deal with the log files. So the slave has um, full root access so that maybe DSA doesn't want to give access. But really, the most of the work can be done without, which is fighting, lock, uh, fighting bugs. Um, it's it's um, PU parts reports, which Lars wrote. I extended it a bit and added quite some best scripts to deal with the results and some cron job, which um, find packages which are not available yet on AMD64. They get, will get rescheduled because they fail because some depends have not been built sends reports about the status of the slave via mail and the, the results of the PU parts run are put on the web, sorted by source packages and by maintainer address. It's since last week, Stefano included it into the PTS, so there's in the PTS now a link showing if the package has a PU parts problem. And I used to f um, use PTS um, user tags to file bugs. And there's a FAQ which has basic, where I put every question which I ever got asked about PU parts I put in there. 
So if you have questions about PU parts, please ask. And then add the wiki, or look at the wiki first. Um, this is the last PU parts result page. Um, there are <coughs> this sunny symbol means that the test, the package is successfully run. And many, there are quite many unknown packages um, because some depends are could not be tested, so <coughs> the status is unknown. Um, in total, there are few parts Debian org runs tests on SID and squeeze. The, the, the test in SID is just normal SID, while the squeeze test includes first an installation in squeeze and then removal in squeeze, and then an installation in Lenny, an upgrade to squeeze, and then removal in squeeze again. Um, the machine is capable of running about 1,000 PO parts tests a day. So checking the whole archive with this configuration takes not, not even two months. And if you only want to do a full test on one distribution, it takes a month. So if the release team wants, has plenty of time to add new tests and run the whole archive. Um, most packages are successfully tested by now because PU parts has been, um, there were several PU parts run by Luke, Lu Lucas, um, who then filed several hundred bucks. Um, the problem are those 6,000 packages which cannot be tested. Um, the easier ones are probably the circular depends um, due to Perl having circular depends on Perl modules and X server on, or X org on X server or something. And KDE, the new KDE libs also introduced a circular dependency, and I guess that is most of the 3,000 circular dependencies. Um, I've started to grab for certain specific errors, um, because at the moment PU parts just says failure, and it's easier to do must back bug filing if you see, okay, there are 50 packages which overwrite other packages' files, which is clearly RC and annoying. Um, those are the errors I can detect. Um, this, but this grabbing is really not the right solution because um, command not found, for example, can be completely harmless and not the reason for an error. So this needs to be done in PU parts, and this will be part of the both session we'll have where we want to discuss how to improve PU parts and give better results. And I don't remember that th more than half of the bugs are not being detected by this grabbing. So this is improvement. Yeah. Is PU parts extensible to the point that where I could say like, for instance, I want to check that not a single package in the entire archive ever accesses, let's say, etc fstab? The short answer to this is uh, yes, as soon as you rewrite it. <laughs> I would not go so far call it rewrite, add, f add functionality. It's, it's just another test. So. What I'm trying to find out is can I put tests in place and test that not? Right. <laughs> come to the box. Mm. Yeah, and the, the, the question I have for filing some of the bugs, are they important or just serious? Because they are policy violations, but we have lived with those bugs for years. Nobody noticed them. So maybe not file them serious. Or, yeah, I'd, great. Um, I plan to have discussions about these seven criteria on devil, because they are at least 20 bucks each, and I want would like to have consensus and then do must bug filing really on it because it's I used to do file two or three bugs every day for some time in beginning of May I think but then stopped as I got as some people complained um, that they believed that f files left over in user local are not serious and I was not in the mood to discuss it and then I just okay <laughs> and this is this is really the annoying part not not running PO parts, but dealing with the results, which are people usually, because the bugs are easy to file, but then... Um, 
Yeah, my, my to do for PU parts is first file bugs. Like all 300 errors we've detected are bugs which should be filed and fixed. Um, for the circular depends, um, I would, my idea is just to whitelist Perl and Xorg because this will give us 2,000 more testable packages. Um, I also would like uh, to aid bug reporting, that it fires up report bug with the log file included and the right package and the right user tag. Detect more errors, of course. Um, error classes is, is this topic for the buff. Multi-arch support, um, because it's master and slave, there can be more, there, um, the, slave, the master could also give other slaves job, and my idea is to um, have the, uh, the packages to test distributed by architecture that this AMD64 machine tests all AMD64 and arch architecture all packages, and the other PU parts love slaves only test the few packages for the architecture which are not available on AMD64, which is mostly bootloaders and the kernel packages. So then a slave could be set up on a build D or another quite loaded machine because it will only run five or ten PU parts tests a month anyway. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but... Uh, the, the work with PU parts is really not keeping it running but dealing with the bugs. And that's the easy part, or that's also the part where you don't need machine access to do it, just um, help on the mailing list, basically, and discuss with the other maintainers which severity it should have and how we should deal with these problems. Viewport is rather nitpicky, and uh, it does find sometimes problems that it shouldn't bother reporting, but it also sometimes, perhaps often enough, finds problems that really should be fixed. And, well, in my four years of, of being involved in parts, I've never yet met a bug that would wipe my hard disk but I'm sure it's out there somewhere. And it would be nice if we could find this before the users do. <laughs> then we can at least tell them which bug reports to look at. <laughs> You're testing removal of packages. How do you handle essential packages? I don't test removal of essential packages. <laughs> Actually, I don't think we in the master slave setup test essential packages at all. That's one of the many shortcomings of PO parts, but most the essential packages are maintained by people who are really, really, really careful. Does anyone have an other question? Please do. I heard a rumor about uh, supporting cloud in addition to Q-Builder. So the question was that there's a rumor uh, with few parts supporting Cow builder instead of uh, P-Builder. I have no idea if it's true. Well, the other day I asked the same question about S-Build, and somebody on IRC then said that it is being worked on for Cow Builder. So I'd say yes, but I can't give you any details on it. But I do have another question um, related to this. Um, is it, is, are you planning or is it possible to have this somehow um, runnable by the user without having to maintain a Truth install? Sure. Be a part creates a CH root every time if it's not told to do otherwise. So it, it will also populate it with the, the base system install? Yes. Okay, cool. The uh, simple command I showed, this actually does everything. 
It's just not the fastest way of doing things. Why do you really want people to run it themselves? Actually, if you have QPath at Debian.org that works fine, that reports on the PTS when something fails, I think it's enough. Because people don't look at the PTS often enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have lintian.debian.org, but it doesn't help people actually fix problems until they run uh, lintian themselves. Yeah, but lintian is much easier to run than QPath, so... <laughs> it's a shorter command, I admit that. <laughs> I would like to make few parts uh, faster and easier to run and someday I hope to have time to work on that but I think for the people who have enough uh, computing capacity and my laptop is good enough uh, running few parts uh, is something that would be uh, one way of making sure that the package actually works but yes uh, I'm not saying that everyone should run it because people developing on netbooks probably want to conserve their battery life for something more important. Is there a web interface where you can check the outputs of Pubart so that you can look at other packages that you might that you you have some interest in um, to see whether they've got bugs that you could perhaps investigate more um, yourself rather than th the two of you um, doing all the hard work finding the bugs. The web interface has all um, log files, the successful one and the failed ones. How are you trying to um, detect automatically uh, well, depending bugs? I'm looking at one of mine here where a tech, pack tech, tech packet is installing some fonts using dependencies and when it's removed some files but left behind, it's not my packet that's doing it, it's something else that it depends on that's leaving those files behind. How do you actually discover what packet had a problem? Uh, the way we do is, it, is that the master and a slave set up the master uh, looks at, uh, gives the slave packages uh, so that the dependence is tested first. And then your package. And if the dependency fails, leaves some files behind, then your package won't be tested at all. But there is a bug in the scheduler so you, that your package was tested despite having a bug there. So I, I, I don't know when it occurs, but it, it should be like last explained, but it isn't. Uh, <laughs> There have also been some cases where Not uh, always. when foo oh. depends on bar and bar is tested first, uh, if it's tested alone, it works. But if it's tested uh, with uh, foo, then it doesn't work. And in this case, someone needs to look at the problem and, and uh, figure it out. Luckily, these are rare. There's also the case the package depends on foo or bar. Foo has been tested successfully but then bar gets installed while testing your package and bar has a bug. Sometimes I think we should not do dependencies. No other questions? That was unexpectedly efficient of us. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, a boff later uh, in this conference. Before uh, the boff, it would be really cool if people could try out PO parts because we have fast internet here and nobody wants to be on IRC. And Please do go out and kill the internet access so that we can, the wireless as well, uh, so that you have some experience of few parts and then come and tell us exactly what is wrong with it. Because that's what we do want to hear on, on Wednesday. 
Okay. Don't kill the internet, but okay. If you can, you try, can please do. We have a local um, mirror here, and all access to other mirrors is redirected to that one. So please kill the mirror. <laughs> And yeah, we, uh, I especially keenly realize that the only saving grace of, of the original PewParts implementation is that it actually catches some bugs. So I would also like to hear more uh, viewpoints on, on uh, how it could be improved, what the problems are, uh, etc. I'm open to uh, even to unconstructive criticism on Wednesday. <laughs> you do not have to be genteel. Okay, I guess we are having a question. Another question. Uh, how easy is, is it to enable this to run on multiple architectures? Uh, in theory, you can have uh, a master and one or more slaves per architecture, and it should work perfectly fine. And at the moment, you are testing which architecture? AMD64. Because the machine happens to be AMD64. Are you interested in anything? Any architecture in particular? Well, I've seen some architecture-specific packages with bugs, and I, well, they were not AMD 64. Right. And yeah, it would be nice to extend this to more architectures, and someday, hopefully, we will. Just a frivolous question. How many times have you found bugs in PUI parts with PUI parts? With PUI parts, I think once. Okay, cool. Did it make you giggle? Uh, yes, and it hurt my ears. In my other packages, I have found a ra rather uh, more problems with PUI parts. Okay, then I guess we are done. Thank you. Thank you.